The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and my name is Greg Wood. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Video Products here at Corel Corporation. And on behalf of myself and Jan Piros, the Senior Product Marketing Manager, or Product Manager rather, for our video products here at Corel, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Today's webinar is, uh, is something we're pretty excited about. It's a brand new product from Corel. Um, I can tell you a little bit about its history in a second. But uh, Corel Motion Studio 3D just launched back in September. And this is our very first webinar about um, the new Motion Studio. So Motion Studio is a product that um, is a product that we have rolled out to add to the Corel video lineup. Some of you might be Video Studio users, and uh, Motion Studio is just an amazing addition to the Corel video lineup since it allows you to add some really amazing visual effects and 3D uh, graphics and text uh, to make really amazing title sequences and embellishments for your movie. So we're going to tell you all about Motion Studio and how to get some pretty amazing results with that very shortly. Whether you use Video Studio or another video editing software, I think you'll be impressed. So before we get started, I just want to introduce everybody for a second to the GoToWebinar console. And on the right-hand side of your screen, if your screen is set up like mine, you'll find a GoToWebinar console that has lots of instructions, uh, lots of little panels on it. And uh, those panels will let you uh, control a few things. For example, let you ask a few questions. You can mute yourself if you want, uh, for some people who might not have uh, their microphone muted right now, namely uh, my colleague Dan Piros. And um, you, can, uh, you can actually go in there and type a question. So if you'll find a question panel about halfway down, and um, again, you can just pop a question in there, and we'll be collating those questions during the course of the webinar, and we'll be answering those you know, both during the course of the webinar, but of course also at the end today. So today's webinar, you should expect to last about 40 minutes, and then we'll have about 20 minutes at the end for questions. And uh, so without further ado, why don't we get started? So just bear with me now, and I'm going to pop over to the next slide in our slideshow. And again, if you have any, if you're finding there's any issues with your, uh, with your, uh, your, the sound or anything, just do pop a note into that chat question. You can send it straight to me or what have you, or ask a question about it, and I'll make sure that uh, we fix that for you. Just a note, Greg, that's not um, my phone. I don't know how, where that's coming from, so... Well, that, that's, that's going to be an exciting uh, uh, exercise in multitasking to try and figure out. But that's the voice of Jan Puris you have uh, speaking right now, and you're going to hear more from him in just one minute. So let's begin. So where did uh, this whole Motion Studio uh, 3D idea come from? Well, you know, number one, we've heard a lot of feedback from our users saying that, you know, I can see so many really cool things happening with 3D and with motion graphics that I'd like to do much more in... Um, video Studio. So in Video Studio, already you're capable of doing some pretty interesting thing with things with graphics and uh, and 3D. Uh, you can do some very interesting compositing. And again, we have another webinar later this month about that. Uh, but you know, when it comes to 3D, it really calls for something that's a little more robust. And a long time ago, Ulead, who we, who Corel acquired Video Studio from, had a product called Cool 3D, and it did some pretty amazing things in terms of 3D graphics. And, but at the time when that product was out, we really didn't have the kind of computing horsepower we do today. And it took a long time to create anything meaningful. So happily, a lot of those great uh, performance capabilities that have make uh, Video Studio a success today, uh, we were able to take and add in to that old cool 3D product and come up with something boldly uh, new in Motion Studio. And it actually allows you to, uh, to, to make some really great looking um, graphics and then quickly import them into Video Studio and there's no waiting at all. It's a really wonderful experience and again that's what we're going to show you today. So a lot of good demand for motion graphics and 3D and visual effects from our customers led us to bring this to market. And you can do a lot of amazing things with this. You can create uh, some amazing title sequences uh, for, and text for video. So for example if you want to create a great intro sequence whether you know, you're trying to mimic Star Wars or you're trying to just make a rotating title to bring some, uh, some special flair to your production you can do that. If you want to take a 2D graphic, maybe bring in a Corel Draw uh, graphic and, uh, and render that to 3D and then embellish it in some way, you can do that. You can make these amazing firework effects and uh, smoke effects with the powerful particle systems in here as well. And then, of course, you can export all of those 
to 3D. So what Jan is going to show you now is we're going to give you a walk around the Motion Studio interface. We're going to show you how to show some of these creative graphics and titles. And uh, we're going to get down and dirty about how to insert these titles and graphics into a video production. And with that, Jan, uh, why don't I throw the presentation over to you and uh, you can show us a little bit more about what Motion Studio can do. Okay, thank you, Greg. So now, Jan, I've given you control of the uh, of the presentation. Do you have control, sir? Okay, if you could just confirm, Greg, that you can see it. I can. I can see a screen, uh, Jan. It's a, it's a black UI, and uh, it says text in it. Then you see, uh, basically, Motion Studio. In any case, welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks, Greg, for the intro. I'm going to be going through a, a number of Motion Studio techniques that you can use. Um, some of these things, uh, for some of you who have already used Motion Studio, uh, will find that, uh, that uh, this is familiar and you've done this before. I'm going to go into a couple of areas that uh, will introduce everybody how to use this stuff. So, let me look around the interface here. If you're a Video Studio user, I'm not sure how many of you would be Video Studio, but um, you'll notice the interface is very, very similar. Uh, you have this uh, same coloring, uh, the same type of play uh, actions, actions and user interface as you would have in Video Studio. So up in the top here, you've got uh, a number of standard Windows sort of capabilities. You've got uh, creating a new file, opening files, saving files, these, these model files, animation files. And then below that, you've got a number of uh, modifiers. You've got a move modifier. You have a rotate modifier, a scale modifier. And on top of that, you also have uh, uh, a, a manual entry areas where you can enter your coordinates or scalars all within this manual uh, manual entry area. You've got some text control tools and they're all con on context sensitive. So on the right side here you'll notice that I have this text object selected. Now because this is a, a object based uh, environment you have this attribute panel that anytime you select an object or a group of, group of objects the attribute panel will show. By Default, it has a number of default attributes, the color of the, the object, the texture, the bevel, all these sort of things are uh, within each object's attributes. The key point here is that anytime you add a modifier, say you wanted to deform or bend something, you could go in here and add that modifier through either the preset panel or through uh, manually adding it, and that will show up as well in the attribute. So anytime you go to modify an object, you just select it and you look into the attribute panel to show you exactly what's happening on that object. The nice thing is, is too, is all the attributes are treed, like in a tree format, so you can delete these and remove them from a, an actual object if you don't like the look and feel of it. On the bottom of the screen, if you're familiar with uh, products like Flash or any of the timeline-based animation programs, you'll notice that we have a timeline. You can go in here and your basic timeline has 90 frames by default, which is around three seconds. You can change this to whatever you like just by entering the number of frames there. An important thing to remember is that everything pretty well inside of Motion Studio can be keyframed. And that basically means that you can change a, a scale, for instance, the scale of the text, you can change the rotation, and also add effects and allow you to keyframe those uh, throughout your, your production environment. So down in here, for instance, the default parameters of this object are the position, the orientation, scale, and that sort of thing. So you have that all, all, all right there, and you can keyframe. You'll notice that there's a default keyframe of position 1. In addition to that, you also have a place where you can set up your frame rate. You can, if you want to have a low frame rate or a high frame rate, you can set this up by these defaults, or you can actually go in here and enter your own frame rate. We also have a number of uh, functions allowing you to delete and add keyframes. So what I wanted to show you is just a very basic, when, when somebody first opens Motion Studio, you want to have some very basic uh, instant gratification to see how it works. So the best way to do that is let's just have this text animate a little bit. So let me just go out here to the 20th frame, or say the 30th frame, and I'm going to do a couple of very basic things. I'm going to move it. If I go up here and select the Move tool, I can move the text right there. I can also rotate it. So let me just rotate. We allow you to constrain if you hold the shift button down. You can constrain it to an axis. So I'll rotate it right here. And I can also scale it here too. So you'll notice that as I was doing this, keyframes were being generated right here. Motion Studio will interpolate from one keyframe to the other. So if I go back to the beginning and hit play, you'll notice there's my text being animated. Now if you don't like 
where your keyframes are located, if they're too soon or, or, or too late, you can actually go in here and select a keyframe and move it down in the timeline to wherever you want it to be. So here, I'll just juggle up these different parameters and I'll play it and you'll notice that the things are happening at different times. If you wanted to remove a keyframe, you would just go in here and say minus and that keyframe has been deleted. Same sort of thing with this keyframe here. If I wanted to add a keyframe, I would just go in here and say plus and that keyframe is added now to the position tool. I can go to orientation and say plus as well. What that allows me to do is allows me to lock a movement at a particular keyframe and allow me to interpolate between this frame and this frame without having to interpolate between the beginning and the end. Okay, so that's ba very basic. A lot of people want to do that right off the bat to animate a, a title and put it in. Again, this title can be any font that you're using within Windows. So if I go here, you'll notice that on the left side of your interface, you have a number of tools. The text tool is, is what I use to enter this text. You have shape tools and, and uh, lathe tools and, and primitive geometric objects as well as particle effects. But on the bottom here, you have an edit object tool. So anytime an object is inside of your uh, interface, you can go in here and edit it. So in this case, it's text. Let me just click on edit object and I can just go in here and change the font if I like. Say for instance, I will go into say Futura, change the font and I'll change the font size or change the font itself, not just add uh, a number there. And now you'll notice that the text has been changed, but the animation has been maintained. So you can do this at any time. A good trick here is to, uh, if you've really made a nice uh, animation that you like to keep, you can actually just save it as, uh, as a, say, default intro, and then open it and just change the text as you go to different projects. Now, a person, when they first start, and say you're using a Video Studio Pro or you're using Adobe Elements or, or some video editing application, there's a couple of tricks to go out to those applications. We allow you to create, within a Motion Studio, we create a video overlay file. And what a video overlay file well, that has an alpha channel. Now an alpha channel is a transparent channel, and that allows you to not have to chroma key in a background that you made in an animation. Chroma keying can be in a video editing application can be a little bit uh, low quality because you know there are nuances to the chroma or the luma of the video. In this case what we do is we export everything that is not the object. So in this case it's the black background as a transparent channel. So if there is any kind of smoke or anything happening from a particle system that background will still be uh, keyed and it will be part of the alpha channel. When you export this, you export it as an AVI file with 32 bits per pixel, and then you can bring that into uh, any video editing application and uh, overlay that over top of your background video. It gives you a very, very crisp, uh, crisp key uh, to put over top of the background video. So that's a good trick to have. We will also allow you to export the 3D model. So if you're 3D modelers, if you're familiar with Blender or 3D Studio Max or Rhino or any of these 3D modeling applications, we allow you to save in two different formats in, in an export format. We've got the DirectX model, which is .x, and 3D Studio model, .3ds. These are very common and uh, supported by basically all of the 3D uh, applications on the marketplace right now. We also allow you to export directly to Video Studio. And because Video Studio and Motion Studio are from the same company, we uh, use the models in Video Studio directly. There's no rendering necessary. You can go directly to Video Studio. But if you don't use Video Studio and you want to make a video file, we can create video files in standard def and high def and web resolutions. And we can also create 3D video files. Uh, we can create uh, image, image file sequences as well as Flash. And we all also allow you not only to save as Flash, but flash with a transparency. So just as I mentioned with your alpha channel, you will also have a transparency in your flash if you want to use that in video editing or if you want to use that on the web. When I mentioned 3D, one of the things I wanted to show you here is in this transport control down here, you have your play command, your rewind, your frame forward, frame back, so on and so forth. And you also have looping commands and, and reversing commands, but you have this 3D command. So if you have 3D glasses that if you're a Video Studio user, you would have received these in your box. If you have these 3D glasses, you put them on, and we will play this in 3D for you. So then you can fool around in a 3D environment using 3D objects. I don't use this in editing all the time uh, because putting those glasses on can, uh, can be a little bit annoying after a while.
already made. Okay, Jan, Jan is back. That we supply. Sorry, Jan, we, we had lost your audio for a second there. I'm not sure if it was just me or everybody, but uh, you're, I, oh. we're all back. When did you lose me? Uh, mere moments ago, and I'm, I'm not sure if the users uh, lost you the way the same way I did. It's possible they didn't, but uh, I'll, it was only about 20 seconds. Oh, okay. So let me just repeat the last 20 seconds. Let me just rewind there. So as I had mentioned, you can make your um, animations manually by going in here and rotating and, 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 and scaling all of your, uh, your uh, movements, or you can use presets that we have here. So let me just go into one of the presets. And you'll notice that we have a number of preset things, for instance, objects, text objects, extruded objects. You can pick these and, and double click and bring them into your preview area. We also have different styles of objects. So in the, in the preview uh, area here, in the preset area, you can go in here, for instance, and change your bevel. So I have some basic bevel commands. I can go in here and just change the bevel of my text and preview what I like. I can use different types of bevels, for instance, boards that sort of thing, custom bevels. And you can add, once you've made a bevel, you can also add your own bevels to this, uh, this storyline. One thing you'll notice is that every time I've added a bevel or, or changed something, in the attribute panel of this object, you'll see that there's all kinds of things that you can do in here to change it. So for instance, the preset is this heart, but you can actually change that uh, within here as well. You can flip the text, uh, you can change the way, the, how wide the board is, and how, or how narrow the board is. So all of these parameters can be changed. The advantage is, is that you have this preset starting point that you can actually go in here and use. Okay? So now I'll say none on my bevel. I can just go up here and say none. And as I go through here, you'll notice there's a number of different things. One of the things I want to do is I want to have some motion to this text. So if I go to my text motion presets, here you have a whole bunch of presets. These are all done uh, in-house so people can use them as, as a starting point. So for example, let me just pick one of them, double click, and if I hit play now, you'll notice there's the text coming in like that. This is something I like. If not, you can just go back to your preset area and pick a different type of animation. And there you go. So you can just export this right now to video and just go back to your video or if you're in video studio just grab the model and bring it into video studio but it's a very flexible way to make really good titles uh, for um, your video productions or your websites uh, one thing i might notice you might notice too is we do have undo commands so for instance i can just undo everything i've done there very very quickly uh, to be able to uh, go back to a, sort of a basic uh, basic uh, layout the other effects that you can have on text as well and you've probably seen this uh, if you've downloaded or used Motion Studio, you have a number of effects, for instance, that are like explosion type effects. Now, each one of these effects, again, can be modified inside of this panel. So this effect is called Blast. You'll notice that right off the bat, up in the top here in my modifiers, in my attributes, I have Blast. If I like this Blast, I can go in here and change all of its parameters. So this gives you a lot of place to fool, fool around. So in this case here, I will go in here and say it's a swirl instead of a a drop down. So then I go here and it's swirling away. All of our movements, all of these presets here ha can be customized from the starting point. So they're very, very handy in that sense. As I mentioned earlier, I can go up here now and I can just delete Blast from that attribute panel and then I'm back to my regular text. The next thing I can do is I can go into uh, some of the other ones. For instance, we have bumps, we have dances, we have distortions, uh, we have path animations and motion paths. So for instance here, I can just double click on this motion path and you'll notice that it comes out and there's my, there's my text. Once you're here, keyframes of that path were generated and they're all right here, for instance. So I have a keyframe from the text being right here. I can go in here and change this if I like. And I can go to these different keyframes and it'll adopt all my changes. There you go. So it's a very, very simple, simple way of putting animations together. Let me just undo some of that there. So let me try to, to go into some of the other functions in here. Certainly titling and text is big. Everybody uses this. So I'll go in here and let me just uh, uh, make a new model. To make a new model, you just hit the piece of paper on the top here that says new, and it has the model tabs here. So that first model I have is text. The next model I have is blank. Also, the preview window can be set up to whatever resolution you like. If you want to work in high def resolution, standard def, or a lower resolution than that, you can actually set this up within the project dimension settings. So the first thing I'm going to do in this next, next uh, uh, 
uh, technique is I'm going to go in and grab a cube. So here I have just a basic cube. All right. So what I want to do with this cube is I want to deform it. So one of the modifiers that we have here is called a freeform modifier. So let me just go, rather than going over here and dropping it from the, the presets, like there's a freeform right there, I can go in here and just add it manually. The preset, the advantage of presets is that they have been preset. There's a number of different uh, things that have been preset. If you are more of an advanced user, you want to customize from scratch, you can go up and just grab the, the plugin from this little plus sign. I click on that and I scroll down here and let me just find my free form. There we go. And here I have my free form. Now, very important, I'm on keyframe number one. So anything I do on keyframe number one is going to keep going through the animation because I have no other keyframes. So let me go over here to keyframe number three. What I wanted to do is convert from a cube into some free form. So I click on free form, and you'll notice right away if I use my mouse, there are my X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z um, um, axes, and my nodes for editing. So in this case here, the way I have it selected is my grid is two by two by two, X, Y, and Z. You can see there, there's, there's two by two by two. I can change my grid, you know, how coarse I want the grid and how many places I want to be able to pull and change. You lost me again? How about now? Can you hear me now? I hope you can hear me now. I can hear you, Jan. I just received a note saying we can't hear you. Yeah, we, we seem to be able to hear you now. Okay. The magic of the internet. So you lost me, what, 20 seconds ago? Perhaps, perhaps not even that, Jen. Okay, perhaps not even that. So hopefully uh, you didn't lose the fact that I opened a freeform editor. And in this freeform editor, I have these nodes that I can adjust on a block. And so, for instance, I'm rotating the block here. And I can go in here and grab a node and change it grab a node here and change it and grab, grab these different nodes. And you can see here that I can actually warp something quite well. Now it also allows me to, to scale, for instance, I can either transform by moving a node or rotating a node or scaling a node. And this is a very interesting way to be able to make some very organic shapes uh, to be able to animate. So I'll say, okay. So now you'll notice on that keyframe number 30, I have got this uh, uh, cube distorted to this. I can rotate this cube here because I want it to rotate. And now if I go back, you'll notice there it is. So it's all freeformed uh, within and rotated within that. So this is a very handy way of doing things. The next thing I want to show is aside from the freeform editor, I want to show you some particle systems. So let me just delete this one. Okay, so just delete that here. So I will go in here and make a particle system. Particle systems within Motion Studio are great. You can do a lot with them, especially that you can export them as 32-bit uh, video. So you can bring them into your video application and bring smoke in and stuff for titles. Uh, as a side note too, I don't know if uh, I don't remember if Greg had mentioned we do have a website called photovideolife.com, and we upload templates for Video Studio that were created with Motion Studio, but also Motion Studio models that you can download for free and use them in your productions and modify them and, and post them again if you like. So here I'm going to make a cube. So here's a cube. I'm going to go in here and, and uh, change this cube. I'm going to scale it using my scale tool. And you'll notice if I, if I go in here, I can just scale it manually like this. But I can also go up here and I can do an exact scale. Let me just rotate it a bit here too. You can see there's a cube. I'll scale it in the Z axis. So there we have it scaled in the Z axis. And again, I can move it around like this. Very, very free form to do these things. So the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to get a particle system to deflect off here. So let me get this cube modified. You see there now it's, it's sort of animated moving like this. Let me grab a particle system. I can insert a particle system just from here or I can use my preset panel. So if I go into my preset panels, you'll notice that under all of these easy palette stuff, I do have these particle effects. I have custom effects. These are leaves falling, hearts. You can see the feathers, that sort of thing. A nice thing on these effects is that you can bring in your own graphics and use those as particles. So if you want to, uh, uh, for instance, uh, doing a, a wedding or a Valentine's video, you have your own set of lips, you can bring in the particle system and change it to your own lips if you like. We have bubbles, uh, we have fire, smoke, snow, that sort of thing. So let's try some fire stuff. 
So I'm going to bring in some fire. So there's the fire. And if I play this, there's the, there's the object moving and the fire burning away. This fire is, is uh, working in real time off the uh, computer. So you don't have to wait for rendering. It, it actually behaves in real time. So let me move this fire off to the side bit here. Now, just as in nature, you do have a number of controls that you can change on this particle system. Again, here we have it selected, and here we have the attributes of this particle. So the particle has things like color attributes that you can keyframe. It has emitter, how much density you want in your fire, and how much emitting rate you want. <clears throat> and then, then we go down in here, and you'll notice that there's emitting speed. So in this case here, if you're making a, uh, a video that you want this to bounce, wants fire to bounce off an object, let me just change the emitting speed to say, or rather the dragging force, which is a dragging force. I'll say I want it to go in the X direction. So there you see it happening there. So you can see, you can change the way this thing drags. Let me just pop that in here again. So there it's going to the, to the X direction. You can animate it how it goes. The, an, another trick, if you're, if you're teaching somebody how to do a very cool sort of sparkler or wheel, you can group objects within Motion Studio. So I can have a number of particle effects grouped to a wheel, and I can, I can rotate the wheel, and, and the particle effects are like a, uh, uh, I guess a, what you would call a whirly gig uh, to be able to uh, uh, sparkle all around. So in this case here, I have this particle effect happening. I have this cube happening. And so I want the particle, I want it to bounce off of the surface. So we do have, turn it on, collision detection. So here we have, you can see now it's colliding with the cube, the, the cube that is no longer a cube. So there you, there you see it's, it's colliding. I can go in here and say, for instance, I'll move my cube while I'm editing. And I'll say, OK, I don't want my, you can see here, it's interacting in real time. So you can position your objects in real time. This is a very, very neat, uh, neat thing to do, like that. You can also change, for instance, how, how particles, uh, their lifespan, their, their density, everything. You can change a number of parameters within a particle. So for example, if I made another, just a very simple, uh, simple piece here, I will go in and make another cube. Okay, and let me scale this cube this way, and I'll pull it down to here. And then I'm going to go to my snow. Okay, snow here. And here is a particle that is a snow particle that was generated. It comes in and it bounces off the cube. Now this could just as easily be text. So let me select the cube, delete that, and I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say school, because I'm finding a lot of people doing for school projects are, are using this stuff. So I'll say school, and I'll bring it down here, and then I'll hit play, and it's bouncing off of the text. Just wonderful. This is a little scary for me up here in Ottawa there, Jan, because we're looking at snow already. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so there we have uh, one particle, but you're not limited to one particle. The nice thing about Motion Studio is optimized to be very, very quick. So I can add some more particles here. So instead of just snow, I'm going to add some um, smoke as well. And we won't call this smoke. We'll just say it's some sort of condensation. So I have that happening. So playing with the particle systems within Motion Studio is amazing. We also have global effects. So if I go in here, for instance, I want to have an effect that is, uh, say, reminiscent of, uh, reminiscent of the painter software that Corel makes. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to just let me delete a couple of these uh, particles because then it gets too, too busy. OK, and so it plays here. And so I'm going to go in here and say, OK, I have this text happening here. I'm going to go in and say, give me a global effect. We have a number of global effects. These effects affect everything within the scene. So I can go in here and say, for instance, I'm going to go in and add a natural paint effect. So here we have a natural paint effect. You can see it looks like a paint sketch. Again, it, it happened in the attribute panel. So I can go in here, and, and by default, that preset is a charcoal piece. I can change it to a colored pen, and I can change the level and so on and so forth. I can turn off the background if I like. The advantage of turning off the background, again, you could take this out to, with a transparent channel to a video production and have some wonderful effects on your video production. I'm going to keep the background on just so you get an idea. So I'll go over here and say, for instance, on this, in this case here, I'm going to rotate it. You'll notice that the effect also happens very, very quickly. 
and you can keyframe the effect as well. So you can change all kinds of things within, within the software. And you can add effects together, overlay them together as much as you like. You have watercolor effects, pencil sketch effects, you know, high contrast effects. The other types of global effects that people like to do, they like to have some dramatic ones. So for instance, here we have some fire. So I can say here, for instance, this, this text is flaming. Now the nice thing is that you'll notice that to, if you've ever tried to chroma key fire over uh, into a scene, it's very hard because you have so many nuances of color. So what we do is because you can export this as an alpha channel, all of the black and all the, 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 the degrees of black are transparent. So you'll never have to do anything within your video production environment. You just have to pull this in and bam, it works for you. So it's very, very handy in that sense. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is something that's a little bit more advanced. You're wondering to yourself, how does this work with the software that I already use, that I already have in my classroom, say? Um, say you use CorelDRAW or PaintShop Pro or Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. You absolutely use those products within a, video, um, a motion studio environment. So the best example is, let me just open up my insert graphics. Now, my graphics area here is a vector area. I can go in here and draw my graphics if I like, but we can also allow you to bring in a background and trace that background if you like, to be able to go in here with splines and tracing. You can go in here also and do a convert to vector. So if you have a, uh, a photograph or a graphic that you'd like to be able to made, uh, made into vector edges where you could extrude, we can do that here too. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to import graphics that I created inside of CorelDRAW. So here's an Adobe Illustrator file holes. You get, you get a, a preview right here. But we also support enhanced meta files, for instance, a, as well as Windows meta files. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to open this butterfly. So here I have a butterfly. You'll notice that this red X, that's the, not only the center of this picture, it's also the, the pivot in 3D. So if you move this object over to the right and the pivots back here, it will rotate around the pivot point. So just be conscious when you're putting together uh, 3D models that you could actually remember your pivots. 3D is very, very funky when it comes to that. It's a concept that you have to keep in mind. So I'll say, okay, there's my butterfly. So as you can see, there's my butterfly right here on the screen. And let me just use my camera control to bring it in a little closer here. So there's my butterfly right there. Now, if I rotate my butterfly, you'll notice that by default it's extruded. So there's no butterflies that are this chunky. So I'm going to go in here and change how thick this butterfly is. So I'm going to go into my bevel, okay, and you'll see here extrusion. I'm going to say only five, okay, because that'll, that'll give me a little bit more, more realist, uh, realistic uh, butterfly. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm, I want to use a, a, texture, a texture on this. I want this to look like a butterfly. So I'm going to go into attribute panel, and I've selected my butterfly. I'm going to go in here and do texture. Now, we can use a number of textures. You can use video. So if you have, for instance, um, a 3D model that is a television set and you wanted to put video onto the screen, totally doable. You just click video and use that as a texture. I'm going to use an image here. So I'll go and use an image. And here I have a butterfly. If any of you use PaintShop Pro, you'll notice that PaintShop Pro has a function called picture tubes that will generate a number of different uh, uh, graphics in, in a theme. For instance, there's construction one, and there's a butterfly one. So what I did is I basically um, dropped a bunch of butterflies onto uh, a PaintShop Pro image and used, saved them as a, as a uh, image to use as a texture map. I'll say, okay, there's my butterfly texture, and I want to just resize this texture. Let me just do it arbitrarily here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm positioning my texture using these mapping coordinates here. Let me just position it some more. I'm getting close to what I want. Just quick and dirty. You'll notice this is not, this is not rocket science. Because if it was, I would be a rocket scientist. But I'm not. So here I have the texture on there. If I rotate this object around, there's my butterfly. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now a butterfly flies. So add another feature. I'm going to go in here to my add a bend modifier. We have this bend modifier. So right away, it's bent, but it's bent in the wrong way. Butterflies don't bend like that. So let me go in here and change my bend parameters. Again, attribute panel, bend parameter has been added. I'm going to go in here and say, yes, it's symmetric, but the butterfly uh, axis is on X and Z axis, or X and Z 
for, for that for the people in the audience. Uh, I will go up here and say the level of bending. I don't want it to be crazy bends. I can go in here just the level of bending like this. And what, because that's the first frame, I can make it onto other keyframes. But because a butterfly is so uh, flitty the way it flies, I don't need to have 90 key keyframes. I can go down here and I'll, I'll, I'll only do, say, 15, 15 keyframes and just loop them because a butterfly will loop like that. So 15 keyframes, you'll notice that my timeline changed to 15. I can go in here now and I can say on this bend modifier, I want it to go instead of down, I want it to go up. So I'll put a negative sign in here. Okay, so now the winds are up. And then I go over here and I'm going to say bring it back to where the rings are down, winds are down. So now if I hit the loop and I hit play, here I have the butterfly flipping. Pretty nice. I can't hear your reactions, but I, I believe they are favorable. Uh, I can go in here as well and rotate them. So now you can see here he is flying around the screen, so on and so forth. Uh, on this case here, I, I wanted to come back so it loops correctly. So you'll notice on my rotate up here, I can go in and, and manually enter uh, the rotation coordinates if I like. So I just wanted to zero, zero, zero. And I can copy a keyframe or I can just manually go in and enter, enter these uh, coordinates. So then if I play this, you'll see that it's doing some weird flipping there like that. Now let's say I want to have a background in here. So right now, if you go on to photovideolife.com, I think there's a template that will be going up there shortly that has butterflies flying around the screen and landing on text. So you can experiment with that. Um, how I did that is basically make a number of butterflies and then just export it as a flash file, I think in that case, a flash file, and then I animated it within the Video Studio Pro. So in this case, let's, let's put a background in instead. I'll go back up to my Easy Palette. Now in my Easy Palette, I can do all these different types of backgrounds that we have. So let me just use this little field here and you'll see here the, the butterflies doing kind of a spastic flying technique. Okay, so you can, you can you know, I can delete that keyframe there because it was getting kind of spastic. So we have that. So in here then I can move this butterfly around. Let me just move this here. I can move him around. I can scale him if I like and have him in the field coming in. And this, if I want to make another butterfly, all I have to do now is just go in here and say copy. Copy that butterfly and paste. So here I have another butterfly. I can take him and I can move him over here. And because I've already made this whole model, I can just change the texture map and give a different type of butterfly. So I'll go back up to my attribute panel, texture, and I'm going to use this other butterfly. So now I have a brown butterfly. And you can move your keyframes around so the butterflies are staggered a bit differently, you know, so they can move differently, and you'll notice that. And you can change your bends and, and just keep copying and pasting, copying and pasting. So it's a very, very handy way of doing things uh, within this butterfly environment. Some of the other stuff that uh, I can show you uh, just a, as a sample of what you can do is you can, let me just open a, a model here. This is a model that is a barn door light and a one of our lighting pieces. So if you look here, for instance, uh, this is an example of a model you have in the grouping, the object manager, I have this thing called barn door, and it has pieces, a housing and a bulb. Right? You can select those separately. We can group objects together, so if you have object that needs to be grouped, they will animate together if you like. But at the same time, in this, in this case, I do have a thing called spotlight. You'll notice the spotlight's happening right here. I have controls on the spotlight. I can change the brightness, I can change the light position, I can change the color of the light if I like, that sort of thing. And again, you can export this as a still image or you could export it as a, as a uh, video. I can go in here and just modify this and just put in some text. And so I have this really elegant looking text here. And you can modify your lighting, you can modify your textures on this. Let me just change that back to white. Makes it a little better. So there you have a look. Very, very easy to do within, within Motion Studio. Let me open another model and give you an idea of how this one works. Film vertical scroll. So I'll open this. And this one you'll notice I have this film. So if I play this, the film is coming through like a, like a Hollywood premiere. The way I did this, very, very simply, 
I can go in here and I click on my object, edit object button. That's an object, I can say edit object, and there is a film that I made within CorelDRAW. You can do this within Illustrator, whatever, whatever drawing or illustration program you use, you can do it, and then you bring it in. And what I did is I added a texture to it, and I also had it animated and had it bent, and then added another light in here. And the light I used here was light bulb again, and I just changed the number of lights. Here I have four lights happening. I can select the, the light that I want to change, and I can change the, the color of it. You can see there it's changed. And this is all, you can animate all of this. So it's a very good place, uh, Motion Studio, to be able to use, uh, to use uh, artwork that was done in another application, and you want to animate it and, you, and, and, and process it more for a web or a video environment. One last model that are open here is this airplane. Now this is a standard airplane that came with, with your models in, in here. If I go to 3D models, you'll scroll down through here and there's an airplane. There's the one I used. And so here you have an airplane that's grouped together with a particle system that is making a contrail. And that's not rendered. That's playing directly from my computer. So the nice thing is, is you can go in here and change whatever, whatever you like. This group, I have it grouped. I have the airplane and the particle system grouped. So I can move the whole group. So then I can move this up here. And I can go in here and play. And you'll notice the airplane now. I could always bend the airplane. It's kind of going, has a, quite a crosswind there. So you can see it's a very simple environment to be working in. And I, I recommend that you experiment and have fun with it. It's, it's quite good. All these models that you see here uh, will be uploaded to photovideolife.com. And you can use them to experiment with and uh, be able to uh, make your own uh, animations. And, and as I mentioned earlier, when you output any of your models, we, you can output to video files or flash or still images uh, and uh, use those in other applications as well. So Greg, that uh, is uh, basically what I was uh, trying to communicate today. Hopefully it wasn't too fast and hopefully it did answer some questions on how to do things within Motion Studio. Well, certainly there's a lot of different features in there, Jan. I think that's what's one of the most interesting things about Motion Studio is just how much you can do. So at this point, you know, I've got a couple questions for you, Jan, we can go with. But if you do have any questions, attendees, please do look at your GoToMeeting console on the right-hand side and uh, pop your question in there. And we're happy to, uh, to answer those as best we can. So maybe, Jan, I can just start off. And, you know, you, you showed us a lot of different features here. And in terms of, of 3D, uh, I, I don't really see another, any apps like this right now. Would you compare this to any other, other 3D software? Yeah, so this, this 3D piece has two, two, I'd say two major things going for it. One is it's pretty straightforward to use. Once you get used to it, it's, it's, a, it's a great piece of software. And you can get up and running, as I showed you, making animated text. The other thing is it's actually very inexpensive. If you look at uh, 3D, uh, there are, there are 3D applications on, on the web that you can buy, and there are, are expensive ones you can buy in the store, and the cost is kind of prohibitive. And, and I think opening this up to more people by allowing to, it to be less expensive is certainly a, a good way to go. There are free ones. Uh, so I don't know if some of the, the audience has used a piece of software called Blender. Uh, that is an open source project uh, for 3D. Wonderful piece of software. Absolutely wonderful. It's also open source and free. but is really hard to use. You know, it is not for the faint of heart. You have to know all the 3D concepts in, in detail uh, to be able to use it uh, uh, competently. So the 3D is difficult. Three, the z-axis is, is very difficult for people to, to sort of grasp and learn. But I think Motion Studio opens it so the z-axis becomes a little bit easier to understand and allows you to sort of move, uh, move very quickly to be able to do some pretty nice 3D things. We can, but and also I didn't mention that we can also import models that you get from 3ds, 3ds models uh, into uh, Motion Studio. So, for instance, any of the number of millions of websites that have .3ds models and objects, you can actually import those here as well. So it's really it's it's a place you can start in 3D, but you can easily still work with some of these other more advanced applications. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a great starting place. I, I, am a, I, I love 3D. I do a lot of it personally. I do a lot of animation and that sort of thing. And what I found is that Motion Studio, although it is so simple, I still use it quite a bit in as far as if I'm making a, um, an animation in 3D Studio Max and I want to be able to have fire coming out of a nozzle, say a rocket nozzle, I can do that in 3D Studio Max and, and learn how to do that. It's, it's 
pretty in, uh, time intensive and it's render intensive. But on the other hand, I can actually make a fire uh, from Motion Studio, save that as an alpha channel video, and then map that onto an object in 3D Studio Max. Then I have this wonderful fire that is uh, basically playing in real time, allowing me to work very quickly within Max. So you mentioned working with Max there, and, and that's one thing I wanted to ask you again. You know, when you're working with video files, and you, you mentioned before how you can take these, these text files, these graphics into Video Studio, can you just as easily work with other software as well, say if you're running maybe Premiere or, um, or you know, maybe even Final Cut or some other video software, can you, can you easily work with those apps as well? Yes, 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 yes. I've, I've worked with a, a number of pieces. You know, we are obviously in the video business. We have a video piece of software, and we sort of keep up to date on, on what, what the competition is doing. But uh, at the same time, I, you know, bring in Motion Studio uh, files. Uh, my last example, I brought a Motion Studio 32-bit uh, file into Premiere and it worked really, really well. So it's, it's a very good place. It's not, you know, not just for Video Studio. You can use it in any kind of video editing application. Anything that uses ABI files or uses the, the, Windows, uh, the Windows Direct Show Drivers. Also, if you're a Mac user, you could also use these files within Final Cut, if you like. So it's not really limited. The, the, the file formats are very, very transportable and very standard. You know, we can render uh, we can render our files from iPod, iPad size files right up to HD progressive files, you know, 1080p, 60, if you like. We, we handle all of that. Great. So I got a few questions, Jan, from the uh, the attendees, and the first one comes from Shamika, and she asks, "Can I enlarge the interface icons? Is is it possible to make these things a little bit bigger, maybe, so they're a little easier to see and click and, and work with?" Unfortunately not, not at the moment. Uh, that is one of the, uh, the requests we've got from a few people to be able to, I too, I, I, I need to look closely at the icons. Trying to fit as much as we can on the screen without being overwhelming is, was a difficult uh, proposition. But yes, we, we, we do have that uh, request from a few people. But you are able to go and sort of close down some of the dockers we have on screen, aren't you, if you're looking just to clean up the interface. Is that, can you move those around and everything? Yeah, so I can go in here and I can say, make this a very simple, simple environment. I can close some of these. So if you, you know, if you're a teacher and you don't want the students to have the access to everything, you can just do this, right? And here you have the preview panel, and then you have that. There you go, just that easy there. Oh, great, great. So Sandra has a question as well, Jan, and the question is, is how we review this webinar, and, and if you don't have the program, is there a trial version available? And I think I can answer it, uh, that question. There is a trial version available if you go to corel.com slash motion studio, and it's written just like it is at the top of the left-hand side of the screen there, motion studio. And if you go there, you can find a free 15-day trial, and it does ex everything that you see within uh, the software here today. And while you're on um, corel.com slash motion studio, if you look under the features tab of that uh, web page, you will find a, a number of tutorials featuring the dulcet tones of Jan Puros, showing you how to do some of the, you know, the really essential things in Motion Studio. So how to animate text, how to uh, export for video, and so forth. If you're looking out on YouTube as well, YouTube is becoming a wonderful source of uh, tutorial content for Motion Studio as well. And uh, we've seen quite a few people already, it's only been a couple of months since this has been out, um, that uh, that uh, have been saying, hey, this is a uh, this is a really useful piece of software, and they've, they've done some tutorials on that. So if you just do a quick search on on uh, YouTube, you'll find some additional tutorials to help you as well. But again, to recap, on the trial version over there on corel.com slash motion studio, you'll find it there. If you have feedback on this uh, on this webinar, I encourage you you can email uh, you can email that to me at greg.wood at corel.com. Or we're actually going to post a recording of this webinar onto our um, our template trading site and our blog over on photovideolife.com. So we will uh, we'll post that in the next 24 hours. And if you have feedback or additional questions, just put them in the comment section, and we'll be really happy to come back to you on those. Uh, our next question again from Sandra is she's asking Jan, can this program create people as well as text? Create people as well as text. Yeah, so human models, I guess. <clears throat> yes, you can. It's not a. It's not a, a high-end mesh editor. What you can do is you can make uh, using some of the tools, like for instance the um, 
the lathe tool, uh, and as well as the extrusion tools, you can make people like Lego people. You can make Lego people pretty easy. But going beyond that into having very realistic uh, meshes of faces, that is a very uh, um, higher end thing to do, and you can't do it in here. You can certainly bring import those meshes into this uh, software, but to create the meshes here, we don't support that. So, Dan, yeah, this is going out on a limb for me here because I really, I really don't know the question uh, of it, but there are other products out there that do 3D people like, uh, I believe there's a product called Poser, I believe it's from Daz. Is there any yep. interplay with products like that and Motion Studio? Yeah, you could bring in the, the Daz, the, uh, the Poser people as 3DS files. Okay. So in Poser, you would, in Poser you would export as 3DS and then bring them in here as 3DS. And then you could do whatever you like with them in here. Yeah, so there's but we a, don't have inverse kinematics and we don't have uh, bones and that sort of thing as, as Poser does. Exactly. A little, little outside what we're trying to do with Motion Studio here so far is what you're saying. Yeah, well, Poser, Poser is, uh, is a character animation software. This is more for titling and, uh, and um, uh, basic animation for objects. They would be great to use together because they are, there's an interplay with .3DS, uh, so you could put them together. And, and, and you know, if you have a toolbox of 3D, they, they certainly could, could coexist. All right, thanks for that, Jan. So if there's, I, I'm seeing not too many more questions in our questions panel now, so Jan, I'm just going to take control of the uh, presentation back from you at this time, and I'm going to throw another quick slide back up on screen. I'm going to show off a quick uh, slide here, if uh, folks can bear with me as I, as I uh, close down my questions console. And uh, so basically, that's, we, this is what we wanted to show you today, folks. And what I wanted to invite you to do is, uh, and Jan, can you see my screen now? I can, yes. Excellent. So we just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. It's very kind of you to take the time out to see a new product from Corel. We're very excited about it. And uh, to, thus far, we haven't done any introductory offers on Motion Studio, but we are today. So with coupon code 4682, and you might want to jot that down, although I will put it on the Photo Video Life blog, uh, you can get 25% off on this product. That's the first time we're do, we're, we've done this, so that's uh, pretty exciting for us. And again, all of this information, including the coupon code, this webinar, additional tutorials, and even a lot of free uh, templates for Video Studio and Motion Studio projects created both using Motion Studio and Video Studio Pro are available for download on photovideolife.com. There you will find those templates that I mentioned, but you will also find some really handy tutorials. We've had a few guest blogs from uh, our friends in the digital storytelling market, um, and you get a template of the week there and a lot of other good things going on. So I encourage you to go and check out that site at photovideolife.com. And again, you can comment there if you've got any questions. And uh, I invite you to join us next time when we do this. The next uh, Corel video webinar um, will be coming up later this month, November 30th. Uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be talking about compositing with Video Studio Pro X4. And Jan, what do you expect we'll hear about in that webinar? Let me answer that for you, Jan. We'll be uh, talking about how to put together multi-layer projects and really using graphics from different sources to uh, put, put together uh, really interesting and creative movie projects for you. So with that, I want to thank everyone again for joining us today in this webinar. Uh, and uh, I hope you'll join us next time. Thanks for the time, and we'll talk to you again real soon, I hope. Bye-bye now. Thanks, all.